Sure. I'd like to welcome everybody here this afternoon. I, I didn't know how it was going to go because did you make a shot today? Okay, raise your hand. Okay, now, now raise your hand. Raise your hand. Make sure you keep exercising that arm. All right. I know it's a dad joke. Uh, but uh, yeah, I didn't, really didn't know how. We, Go to usually do the evening programs, but today uh, we're able to get an afternoon program. And uh, many of you, I think, know John. John, John Beasley, anybody? How many know Oscar? Well, he's not here today. <laughs> I'm sorry, but John, I'm sure will fill you in on that. Uh, so, just by the topic and uh, um, familiarity of the speakers, uh, I yeah, that's probably why we have so many here today. So uh, thank you for coming, and please welcome John Beasley. I never get nervous till I actually see how many people are here. I was fine until I walked in the door. Uh, yeah, the man who put this together uh, is at home nursing broken ribs. Oh. Big surprise. 94, he fell getting on his bicycle at Dr. Champion's office. <laughs> and if, after 50 years of practicing medicine, he said, I always heard broken ribs hurt. <laughs> he was right, they do. So he wishes he was here. He's on the mend. You know, I suppose we're going to have to have the talk about whether at 95 it's time to quit riding your bike 100 miles a week, but we'll wait on that. So, uh, thanks for inviting us out here. I think Roger may have put the bug in Dave's ear to ask us to come out and uh, uh, give our presentation. I think this is the fourth or fifth time we've given this presentation, and my dad and I have had a lot of fun doing it. I brought some guests today. I brought my wife, Beth, over here, and I'm, she's seen this presentation about three or four times, but I said, you know, when this presentation's done, if you're not there, most everybody's going to come up and say, well, where's Beth? We want to see her. So, <laughs> and then I brought uh, 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 Tom and Barb Nignish's daughter, Mary Helen. She's in from California. I know that Doug and Tom have a lot of friends out here, so... We brought her and her brother Tommy. His Tom's here, right? We figured this was kind of like a, you know, presentation re reunion, kind of a mixture. So I wanted this picture is my great grandfather, and this picture was maybe the first picture Oscar photograph Oscar ever took, and it was taken in his parents' backyard. We think it was spring. 1941, and uh, this is before they had wonderful facilities like this when an older individual would go live with their parents. And Oscar took this picture with a, if I get this right, in fact I emailed him before I came over here to get the details. Apparently back in the 40s your toothpaste came in a box. And he had a coupon on there that if you pulled off the coupon and you sent Colgate 15 cents, they sent you a plastic camera made out of Bakelite. It was a film camera. So that may have been the first picture Oscar took. Now, the question is, well, how would you get it developed? Well, he had a cousin, Paducah, Kentucky, named William. And in the South... Not only do you have nicknames, but you have nicknames on nicknames. So William was known as WL, but then that got changed to Dub. Dub was brilliant. You know, my dad was no dim bulb. His brother was one of the top hand surgeons in the world. He was no dim bulb. Oscar told me that Dub was brilliant. But Dub didn't get to go to college. His parents said, no, you're staying here running the family business. But Doug made it and put together from scratch uh, enlarger. 
and they were able to develop this picture. So that was the first picture Oscar took. And then, of course, over the years, he's taken hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of photos. In fact, he has all his negatives in a database now. So I send him an email and say, well, I'll give you a good example. When County Champion passed, within two days, Oscar had sent out a photo album of 51 years of Connie at Mercy Hospital parties, at internal medicine parties, at parties that were weddings, just by searching her name. So, so what happened was, what Oscar had done in the early 70s, when urban renewal was going to happen, he knew where all the sites were that were going to come down. So on Thanksgiving, he went out when the students were gone. He has a purpose for everything. So I'm going to do it Thanksgiving. There won't be any students. won't be any cars to block my view. And he took photographs of everything that was going to be torn down. So a few years ago, he said, hey, let's go re-photograph those same spots. See if we can get exactly where I took those pictures initially, right? And let's photograph them. Says, okay, that sounds like a plan. <coughs> Took he and I a little bit of time to work out our creative differences. But we got there. And then he took the photographs generally, and you'll see them did on a before and after. So they'll have a photograph of the early 70s and then the photograph from a few years ago. He also mixed in some photographs in terms of Iowa, downtown Iowa City changing based on fires, right? <laughs> Somehow, I don't know how, must have been, this was before everything was, you know, phone and all stuff. He knew when there was a fire in downtown Iowa City, and he would say, let's go check it out and grab his camera. And he's got photographs in here that you'll see of the Strand Theater fire, and then the Things and Things fire, which had big roles in shaping downtown Iowa City. So when I worked through this, these slides, a couple things. I've got to get my pace right. And what I mean by that is, when I put up a picture, I'll give everybody a chance to kind of get oriented to the street and what they're looking at. And then we can maybe talk about it a little bit before I go to the next one. Okay. The other thing is, a couple things, is we tried to put this together best we could like you're going for a walk. Okay. So you start, if you, in your mind's eye, if you're at the west end of what I call the uh, Ped Mall, right? It used to be College Street through there. You're looking right at the mall. Okay, we start there, and we kind of work. Our, there's a building there, but College Street used to go through. We kind of work down that street, and then we kind of come back and we go south on Clinton Street, looking both south and north. And then we get to Burlington. We look west on Burlington Street, east on Burlington Street. And then we work our way south, a little slow here, past the courthouse to Harrison. I think it's Harrison. Go left one block to Dubuque Street, work our way north on Dubuque Street through downtown. Okay? And then, I don't know, somewhere we end up on Market Street maybe? and then work our way back a little bit. So it's a, it's a walk, okay? A couple things that made it fun for, I know Beth commented on this to me, if you remember something and you have a comment, right, we get, we've had some great comments, right? You know, I remember going there when I was, you know, with my parents, you know, say it, because that makes it fun for, for, for Beth and I, and it makes it fun, I think, for others, okay? So, 
There's Oscar's little narrative. He did in three concise sentences, which took me five minutes. Okay. Okay, here's where we start our walk. Okay, I'll give you, I'll give you a few seconds to try to acclimate yourself. Let's see if this pointer works. Oh, I see. So, standing here, right? Clinton Street, then, remember, oops, uh oh. Sorry. Uh oh, we got, there we go. So, so there, I'm gonna not even touch that red thing again. There's College Street where the mall sits now. The annex, right? Annex. I think one of these places was, this is writing Oscar's help, uh, B.A. Horner. Right, there's some automobile dealerships. Somewhere down in here, we'll have a picture of it here in a soon, was uh, where uh, internal medicine started. Yep. Chris Schrock, yep. George Anderson, yep. Oscar. The story that Oscar tells about B.A. Horner is, I didn't know the man, I'm, I'm sure most of you did, but he said, uh, Oscar remembers him saying, I'm, I'm familiar with all the tax brackets. I prefer the high ones. <laughs> yeah. And I'll tell a story about the annex when we get to another picture here. So, of course, that's all torn down and we have the mall there now. Okay. There's where... That's where Chris Schrock started his first practice. Now I think this is, somebody have to help me, the engineering building? Yeah. That's quite a change. And I didn't realize that College Street went not just to this point, there was a steep hill that went down to yes. Capitol? Yes. Capitol. Yes. Madison, okay. Okay. That's capital there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, he threw this one in because, you know, he likes the pictures of the group. This is an older photograph. It's 1963, but it's a fun photograph, and I know you'll recognize a lot of Chris Rock, George Anderson, Oscar, uh, I know many of you know Carolyn, Carolyn Pullman. There's Maxine Thornton. Chris Schrock's parents. Right there. Here's my story to connect you up with the annex. Apparently at the annex in the 60s and 70s, they did something called pigskin pickers, where you would come in and you'd, on a Friday and you'd fill out a, you know, what college teams would win and what would, you know, and there was a little, I mean, I suppose you'd call it gambling. And there was a big deal at the end. Maxine Thornton was the only woman permitted to participate. Her husband was the judge. She was there as his proxy. <laughs> okay, now we're starting to see some pretty big changes, right? We're looking south on Clinton Street in the process Right? Buildings have come down to build the mall. There's the courthouse right there. See the crane? That's what's there today. It looks to me like this might be this just starting to build the parking ramp. Well, 
what he doesn't have a photograph is, and most people ask us about this, don't you have a photograph of the temporary buildings on Clint Street that was in the 70s with Hawkeye Barber and Bucks Leather? Uh, yeah. Most people say, where's that photograph? Of? We'll get Oscar started on that. Okay. Then he had a photograph. We went up on the par parking ramp. must have been constructed. He got up on that took a, a photograph north along Capitol Street, and then on a Saturday morning, he and I got back up there, and there's the engineering building. And there was a, I think they're still there, but the, uh, the university place their police station is in the mall, in the basement of the mall. That's why there's all these police cars up there. And there, and then there's internal medicine right there. That was Mercer Publishing before that. Oh, <laughs> that were the were Oscar and Chris were? Yeah. Is that is that did that then become economy advertising? <laughs> Okay, this is, I think, looking back to the south, north. Okay, this is the Hanks, right? Right. Oh, I think we're looking, yeah, we're, I think we're looking north. Yeah, you're right, right? Is that Rorschach's? Okay, there's a trick question about Rorschach's. It took me three presentations before somebody explained it to me. It had two entrances. One on Clinton and one on college. Because it was an L. Because I kept looking at these pictures saying, wait a minute, there's Rorschach's. What's it doing over here? And then there's Looks to me like there's things and things starting to be rebuilt, and we'll show you what led to the rebuilding here in a little bit. And here's another example, although we don't have pictures of this fire. My recollection is a fire took this building down, and then, then this was marked. And Monica's first big project was replacing this. This was her first kind of modern new structure. But is there anybody in here who didn't buy a bicycle, a Schwinn bicycle, <laughs> from Lee Novotny right here? Now, and then it's a yoga studio now. <laughs> yeah. You know, this gives you a little hint, and we'll work our way there, but this gives you a little hint about what happens to the south there, right? Because when you get closer, you'll see this corner is all gas stations. Now we're, now we're looking back to the north again. I think there's a filling station here. Whiteway is gone. This is where the bread, I think this is the area where the bread garden must be in. Starbucks, Starbucks. And then, yeah. Starbucks and then Novotny's there, and then there's an alley here. But there was a 
I wish I could read the prices of the gasoline because I guarantee it was less than it is today. <laughs> Okay, now we're looking west down Burlington Street, okay? Okay, here's, if I've got my bearings right, here's the building that H.D. spent most about three or four decades in down here, right? You ought to be able to identify that. This is all parking ramp now, right? And the photograph is being taken really where the new Clap Music building is, right? Yeah. Right here? Right? Okay. Yeah, you can see a little piece of the new music building right there. Give everybody a second. So where was the where was the West Music Building? In that building closest to us, on the on the that one. That's kind of neat to see that music has kind of returned to that to Burlington Street there. Okay, here's I think the second view from the other side of the street, right? These are all gone. This was, this is a new building. Now, if my memory serves me, you can't see it here, but for some recollection that Dean Jones had a filling station down. Yeah, because I remember when Oscar took me to my first Iowa football game, we got to park at the gas station. And they were very upset because one of these houses across the hall, across the street had an American flag in the window. It was right during the Vietnam stuff. And they, the, the attendants were, were very upset. Okay, now, looking to it southeast, across Burlington Street from Clinton Street, This is where the new condo hotels are. Mod Pods down right here. This is, still, I think that's Goodyear, right? This is, this building here, I firmly believe is run by the CIA. <laughs> Has anybody ever seen a human being come in or out of that building or met anybody that works there? I have never, ever seen anybody who works there. <laughs> this, this will have a better shot when we're coming down to Puke Street, but my understanding was this was a furniture, an interesting furniture store, and it was interesting because the owner refused to sell anything. <laughs> we learned that at one of our last presentations. Yeah. Anyone sell? <laughs> it was Hanson's antiques that then they moved down to Townsville. So, look at this. This is amazing. Here's a filling station, right? Here's a filling station. You were, you were on the DX by the music building, and there was one. In a, and then, not far from there, we'll see in a, a photograph where the mirror law firm of the public library was. There's a bunch of filling stations down there. So you can just see the, those new buildings there on the, that are being constructed right there. Okay. Federal money, right? Taking everything out, putting in the, what used to be the post office. 
And I was thinking about this the other day when I was getting ready to think about what I should say here. That building's already obsolete, right? The post office has moved out. There's the old Rebel Motel. It's been replaced by a, a new building. I told this last time, and I, I broke my own, you know, my own, as an attorney, I always start with deny, deny, deny. But I told this, Roger and Mary were in the audience. The Rebel Motel wasn't a very big place. But I would say on New Year's Eve, 1978, the city, city High senior class, maybe 400, Tom Simpson's junior class, 400, Bobby Forsythe. I'm not sure how 400 people fit into that hotel or how we got <laughs> access. Tom Simpson told his parents they were staying overnight at Oscar and Betty's. I told them I was down at the Simpsons. <laughs> Me and the rest of City High School were it packed into that building. Still a mystery how we got in there, but... Okay, now we're looking down west on Court Street, right? So here's the, you know, the University Wellness Center's down in here. The music department moved into here after the flood in, what, 2008? Courthouse property's here. And the street went through, right, all the way to Burlington. But I think... And I think I got this from uh, Joe Clark. His, his father and mother, these house, some, several of these houses were a part of an urban renewal parcel. And Jim Clark got them. And that's where the Pentecost apartments are. That was, the, that was the, one of the Clark's first big ones. And they got several parcels right there. And then they, then they also, this corner got developed with that building. Here's another view on the other side of the street, looking west. You know, when you'll see in these subsequent photographs, these houses came down, and it looks to me like it really became kind of physical plant for the university when you see the subsequent photographs. Yeah, you know, looking at this, a pretty steep hill even on the north side of the street. Actually, we're looking north on Capitol Street. We're on the courthouse property. That's why it's steep. We're looking north on Capitol which used to go all the way through. And then here's what I was talking about, looking to the west from the courthouse. You know, this is, you know, it's still changed, but it looks to me like they took down the houses and the university needed the parking and some physical plant space. Okay, along Court Street to the west. I think this is kind of a cool house. Okay, and that's when I've got to get oriented. We're, I think these pictures don't match up perfectly, but I think this is Harrison Street, right? This was on the corner, and then the new Midwest One banks across the street. So actually, this photograph would be down in this area. And these all came out, of course. This one, the only reason we took this one, it was a Saturday morning, because it was a crisp, well, March 18th, crisp morning 
And it just, it's, we like the picture. That's why we, it's just a cool building. Really neat building. We thought it was a great photograph, and we thought we'd put it in there. Okay. Harrison and Dubuque. Here's something you haven't seen for a while. I'm going to kick out of this. Phone booth. <laughs> and this is where Security Abstract it was located, right here. And then we're looking north along Dubuque Street. And I saw something the other day that, in, in some regards, I had never seen before that replaced phone, book, phone, phone booths. At the corner, and they're probably all over town, at the corner of First Avenue and Court Street by what used to be Hoover School, there is mounted a, I don't know what, uh, what the term is, for AFib. If somebody has AFib, you shock the heart? They have it mounted there, and apparently you, know, you dial 911 and it'll open up for you and you can administer first aid. Yeah, I didn't know. Yeah, i never seen that before. If you're going to have one, that'd be the spot. <laughs> so anyway, these all came out, right? And then it looks like post office went in. And I'm not sure what they're going to use, what really the ultimate use of the post office is going to be. VA. It's a federal building. And... Okay. This is along uh, Dubuque Street. I thought this was kind of a cool duplex, right? It's just really unique with these two little. Well, they yeah they were probably they were getting ready to take this one down, right? They're starting to take windows out. Okay, we're moving along. We're moving along Dubuque Street, right? These all came down. Here you go. The corner's been replaced with the bus stop, I guess. I used to, I call them bus stops, and I guess they're known as transit centers now. Okay, here's the back. Remember my comments about the, and Roger's comments about the antique store that was completely jam packed and they wouldn't, wouldn't sell you anything. There it is. Mod Pods there now. This has come out and we have a new building there. And of course, this is the hotel blocks it off. That must be the University of Iowa Hospital Tower right there, isn't it? Yeah. Going west on Burlington. Okay, here we go. Strand Barbershop Fire. So, if I, if I have my, my, mind, my mind's eye right, that was never, Strand Theater was never rebuilt. It's really the walkway if you were at Bushnell's Turtle or Martini's, between the hotel, it's that walkway. Okay? Audrey Hepburn, or Strand, the Strand Theater, Barbara's Bakery was there. Audrey Hepburn movie. Right? Yes. Yeah. And you know, we'll have a better pic. I don't have pictures of it. And I don't know if any of you have been in downtown Iowa City. In the back, all behind these buildings is a humongous construction project where they're building uh, residential units. There's another. So here's the. So here's. 
This is by the public library, right? And that's the walkway I was referring to is right in here, and then Bushnell's Turtle would be there. So the Strand Theater was right in this area. training because it completely burned down. <laughs> now here, this is, I find this picture fascinating because I, about the fourth time I gave this presentation, we were at the public library, okay, here's Osco, here's what's now the Ped Mall, and it was on Friday afternoon, and an individual raises his hand and says to us, I worked at the Strand Theater. I was a projectionist, not that night, but that afternoon. And I had left, and he said, there's where the fire started. There was an artist who lived up there, and his chemicals and oil paints. So if you look at it, dark, dark, there's where it started. And, it, and he also, I think, said that he had learned they had trouble getting people to leave the theater. <laughs> the fire started upstairs and they wouldn't leave. Must have been one heck of an Audrey Hepburn. <laughs> and you can see a glimpse of what used to be Osco there in the Penn Mall. Okay, here's a, yeah, here's the, Here's what's there, that Plaza Center. Plaza Center where Hansel Lynn Meyer used to be. This is all gone, the walkway. Okay, this is after the fire, right? There's the, okay, help me out, east wall of what was Martini's and Bushnell's, right? Strand was here. When you have the real photograph, you can kind of set the timing of it by, it says, I think it says, remember Utica. Remember that, that big prison riot there? And somebody was upset about that, so they painted on the, you know, at least they painted on a plywood uh, fence instead of on the building. This is the building that Roger Simpson had to help me out in understanding what the heck was in this building. I never remember it or have an understanding, this big white building. Were the odd fellows in there? And there was a cat, a, a restaurant. Bamboo Inn. The Bamboo Inn. And then right up here was a, a parking lot, which was actually. Oscar didn't photograph it because there wasn't a building. There was already a parking lot. But it was part of urban renewal. And I understand that the uh, Hotel Vitro was the last urban renewal parcel they got developed. Here's a good view. Here's the walkway. Here's what I call the Bushnell's building. And then there's the East Wall. And something called the Ebony on that building. I didn't know what it was, the Ebony. And just another view of a pet, which is now the pet mall. Yeah. 
Okay, there's Rorschach, there's the trick question on College Street, Osco's. I got a yoga shop down, trees are coming in. I was thinking Lorenzen was in there at some point. Maybe I'm off by a block. Oh. Okay. Okay, here we go. Thanks and thanks, Fire. I went to this one with Oscar. That's the coldest night I ever, ever remember. In fact, I wanted him to come to one of these presentations. I was talking to Dave Harris once, and I was telling him about this show, and I was telling him about this picture. Dave Harris is a retired police officer. He said, I was there that night. It was horrific. It was so cold. So the fire, act, apparently, in one of the presentations, uh, Marshall, no, Marshall Wegman was there. She owned things. She said she was out of town. <laughs> but the fire started in the building next to it, which is now the yogurt shop. She says it was a paper business, and they had lots of paper in there. The bookshop was the paper place. Yes, OK. So there's the corner now. Now, the next one's coming up. Since it was 15 below, Oscar knew there'd be a good, some good photographs the next morning. So, Either before he went to the hospital or between the hospital and the office, he knew there would be great photos. And look at the ice. Just a solid block of ice. Looking back to the west, look at that. And look at the college students. Oops. Let's see, what direction do I need to go here? I think this is just a sheet of ice that these college students are trying to ice skate their way to class. to the southeast, right? We're back, the martinis and the Bushnell's turtle. See, there's, there's, of course, there's big Sheridan. I guess it's a graduate in Hotel Beecher block this view now. Okay, this is pennies. This is all in a new library, right? Gas stations. Man, you guys had your driver's license back in the 70s. must have just driven everywhere. <laughs> Eight gas stations within two blocks of downtown Iowa City. So this all came down for what's now library. Looking north on Dubuque as we work our way towards Washington. This is all gone in the new hotel there, or new co-op. Was that where the famous Donnelly's Bar was? Is that what you're saying in here? Projects, which is in 
right, must be right where this is right here. And I, I don't know if I can see the, the, the sign, but when I was forced to do errands with Oscar Saturday afternoon, the bribery was, I want to say Piper's Chocolates or Piper's was here. Yeah. Yeah. Taffy apples and chocolate turtles. Right in this area. Now this is the one I was puzzling on. Right? Washington Street, the Engler, right? Here's what's there now. This building must have, somebody has to help me out here. This building must have been torn down to make for this park. Oh, yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Because this building matches this building. Yeah. Right here? So this came down to make what is called what? Blackhawk Park? Or? Yeah. That one took me a little study to think that one through. think that fires shape downtown Iowa City as much as urban renewal. Okay, now we're farther. Mott's Drug. Is that Dean's? Is that uh, Earl Riley's daughter used to own that? Danette? We did one of these presentations and uh, I think one of Jean Greb's daughters must have been here because she wanted to point out that these cars were probably sold by your father. <laughs> and there was another fire in this area on a Friday night. The bike shop burned down. Remember that? And the students came out to watch the fire, and then, you know, as the flames went up, they cheered. They prosecuted <coughs> the store owner three times for arson. And his defense was... And he made it stick, ultimately. I couldn't have started the fire. I was too inebriated. <laughs> and they had witnesses all over town. <laughs> so it's one thing I didn't get done, but best brother, who's an engineer, was in high school. And he found out where they took all the old bikes to throw them away. He snuck out there with his toolbox and a flashlight and took enough pieces and built a tandem bicycle. So I called up the attorney who defended the uh, inebriated bike owner and said, if anybody needs a ride on this bicycle, it's you. <laughs> See, now we get to the, 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 the northern part. Not a lot of, you know, these buildings haven't really changed much. They weren't part of urban renewal. This must be where... Uh, uh, oh, it used to be Atlas, and it's now, yeah, St. Birch, and then Bost is in here. Great. And was Hamburg again number one around here? Further up in here? Almost down. Okay. So this? Yeah, Joe's place. Let's see if I can. But this hasn't really, this hasn't changed. It wasn't part of urban renewal as far as I know. Still the same. Okay, here's another. Fire cleaned out this area, right? See this, I had this figured out. There's a, this matches up. There's a door right in here. 
that matches this door, right? Fire took out, Mark and Monica bought the corner from Gilda, right? Put in one of their new projects, and then fire took out right in here. What's that? Was it Gilda's across the street? This is the south side. No, I think the, the what's now across the street, I would say, is uh, Van Allen. No. Yeah. This one? Yeah, that was that was a car. Okay. Uh, I can't say his last name. Okay. Okay, now we're at Clint Street looking up towards Old Brick. There's the new Okay, Roger spent some time in this building. Central Junior, I probably spent time here. A lot of you probably went to school here. When I when I got this picture from when I had this picture from Oscar, I emailed it to Andy Pierre. I know most of you probably know Andy. And his he sent me a very short, concise, succinct response, which was, best school ever, period. <laughs> I heard it was a wonderful school. It was a kind of a melting pot of kids from all over the air, uh, downtown, Summit Street, Manville Heights. I heard it was just wonderful. And there was a swimming pool in there at one time. You know, I don't want you to get the idea that my wife's husband's a kleptomaniac, but before they tore it down, if you remember the gym, it had a track above it. So when you went in there to play basketball in junior high, Central would always let you go to the corner and shoot a free one, right? Because it hit you, the ball hit the hit, hit you back in the head, and of course they laugh hysterically. And it had a scoreboard that wasn't like today's scoreboards, it was like a clock. Before they took it down, all of a sudden, somehow, that scoreboard, and I wish Chuck hadn't gotten rid of it, ended up in Best Parents' Garage. <laughs> somehow, I don't know how you get a scoreboard out of the school and take it home at night without the police noticing it, but maybe they were off with training with the fire department. <laughs> so here's Clinton Street. Stop part of Urban Renewal. You know, we put this picture in, I think Oscar's thinking is some things have changed, some things haven't, and some of the old stuff's pretty nice. We just like this picture. It was graduation. We thought this was kind of a neat picture. I think that might be might be the last one we did, but I've got some more because okay, here's what we did. Because so much has changed since we did this slideshow, right? It's amazing how many new buildings in the last two or three years have gone up in Iowa City. So I, I think this is taken from what is known as the view. Right? North along, here's the music building, Old Capitol, right? Restaurant looking out over the city. And even since Oscar took this picture, this has been built on with another hotel and another condo unit. Different view of the courthouse. Isn't that neat?
looking to the south at the new Midwest building. Graduate hotels, done some painting. There's some of the new. The edge, that's what, is that the edge? Okay, that's the last parcel, okay. Boy, they packed a lot into that block. Okay. Is that the new Chauncey? John Wilson's was there. Bus, trans, transportation center. And John Wilson's. Another photograph. So this is all since we did the slideshow. That's the pace that things are going on in downtown Iowa City. This is the Court Street Hotel. Iowa Avenue has a new building. They're just everywhere. Mercy Hospital is probably right in here. I think that's a crane probably built on the Johnson. <coughs> There's a that was built between the time of the first pictures and this. So a, a, couple of, a couple of comments before I end, a couple of things that I did. You know, and Iowa City is, and don't get me wrong, I know we all love living there, living there. You know, and this probably, some people might say it's part of the fun, is, you know, I, I, people in Iowa City can't, they couldn't agree if it's, I don't know what time it is, 4.30, right? You can't. But, the, but how did they get urban renewal through Right? How did that, because Bill Brandt told me his father was on city council and had threats against his life. Yes, threats. It went to the Iowa Supreme Court twice, I think. And so, how did they finally get this through in Iowa City? John Ballmer told me two things happened. First of all, the Fed said, we're about to tear up the check that's going to pay for all this, right? But the city council, if I get this right, how many are on the city council now? Seven? Yeah. It went from five to seven, and the people who were for urban renewal got their people elected. And that's how it got done. Then the next controversy they had was, okay, we have these parcels, urban renewal parcels. How are we going to distribute them? Are we going to give them to one developer? Are we going to let people bid on them? How are we going to, are we going to separate them out? You get this one, you get that one. Ultimately, obviously, they decided on the last, that there was a process that different developers would get different parses. So, you know, as I kind of bring us to an end here, you know, my thought is this. There's been a lot of changes in downtown Iowa City. There's been things that haven't changed. I think you can find people who like the old better than the new and vice versa. I happen to think it's a nice blend. And sometimes I think we take for granted how fun downtown Iowa City is, right? Beth has an uncle who lives in New Hampshire. He was on the board of directors at Grinnell. And our, when he'd come to meetings, Beth's aunt would stay with us Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night. He'd go to Grinnell to his business, have a party Saturday night. One time he got back early, so he said, I've never been really in downtown Iowa City. I'm just going to go by myself and walk through there. He came back and said, wow, you have a really neat, fun downtown space, right? And I have to say I agree with him. So this is Oscar's presentation. I'm just the proxy. So I hope you enjoyed it.